Hi, I'm Nick Baraboo, and welcome to my presentation about what to buy when you want to build a computer. Let's nerd out. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today are the many different parts involved in buying and building your own computer. Uh, first thing that we're going to look at is the CPU, then the motherboard, power supply, RAM, hard drive, cooling system, case, peripherals, and then the optional stuff. I know that there's a lot of things on this very long list, but uh, we will dive into each one of them uh, as we go. Uh, first thing I'd like to talk about is the CPU. Uh, the CPU does all of the computer's actual computing. Uh, CPUs have a variety of things that make them unique, but the biggest one related to expense and speed are the amount of cores. You're going to want one with multiple cores, but won't need one with too many unless you're building a really high-end computing computer. Uh, CPUs tend to run between $50 and $500. There's a huge range on these depending on the amount of cores and the brand. Uh, you, a good brand to go with is Intel. Uh, they usually run between $150 and $200. Uh, next is the motherboard. Uh, basically what the motherboard does is it connects all the parts and allows them to talk to each other. Something to keep in mind when buying a motherboard are the slots you'll need, like how many sticks of RAM you'll like to put in, or uh, whether or not you'll want a graphics card, or two or even four. Another thing to keep in mind is the form factor, uh, so that all your parts will fit in nicely and everything will fit in nicely into the case. Uh, you can usually find a reasonable mother motherboard for about $75. Uh, power supplies, uh, basically what it does is it powers your computer. Um, there are two different types of power supplies. You can find a modular power supply and a power supply where everything is already, like all the cords are already coming out of it. Uh, the ones with the cords coming out of it tend to be a little messy, but it also kind of guarantees that you're going to have everything you need, while a modular one might have a, uh, might be lacking the uh, certain cord that you need. Uh, some devices are powered uh, through the power supply directly, while most of them are actually powered through the uh, motherboard. Um, basically, the power supply plugs into the motherboard and it uh, transfers power to most of the parts, but some other parts don't require power from the motherboard, but they do still require power, like a GPU or uh, your hard drive. Uh, those will be plugged directly into the power supply. Uh, something to look at when you're buying a power supply is the rating. Um, the rating can be uh, bronze, silver, gold, and I think it can go up to platinum and titanium. Um, you'll basically just want one that is rated. Uh, if it's rated and comes with a lifetime warranty, you're pretty much guaranteed to have a pretty solid power supply. Um, something else to look at is the wattage. Uh, if you're running your computer with a lot of internal components plugged in, like a graphics card, uh, or extra hard drives, or a bunch of stuff plugged in on the outside, like uh, 30 sticks of uh, like flash drive, um, you'll need to have higher wattage than um, if you were just running a base model computer. Uh, power supplies usually run between 50 and 100, depending on the rating and depending on the wattage. Uh, RAM is the next thing I'd like to talk about. Let me adjust my notes a little bit. Uh, RAM is uh, short for random access memory. It's basically where your computer holds all of the information you're using right now. Like right now I'm using RAM to hold PowerPoint. Um, it, the things in RAM are deleted as soon as you shut your computer off. Uh, that's why Windows and Macs will recommend that you save or shut down a program before you turn off your computer, or else uh, changes you've made will be lost. Uh, there are a couple different types of RAM, uh, DDR2, DDR3, and DDR4. Uh, DDR3 is probably what you're gonna want. Uh, it's about as fast as DDR4, but much less expensive. Um, it's noticeably faster than DDR2 though, so you'll probably want to focus on DDR3. Um, usually you'll want, depending on what you're planning on doing with your computer, uh, between 4 and 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, you can have multiple sticks of RAM, 
uh, depending on how many slots you have in your motherboard. Uh, so 32 gigs can be relatively easy to get to. Uh, you can have four eight gig sticks of RAM, uh, but 32 gigs is kind of a huge amount. Uh, you're probably not gonna need any more uh, than eight. Um, RAM tends to run about $5 per gig. Now there's a huge spread in this depending on um, how much uh, data is on the stick of RAM, but a general rule of thumb is that um, a four gig card or a four gig stick is gonna cost $20, an eight gig stick is gonna cost about $40. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about hard drives. Unlike RAM, uh, hard drives save data long term. So you shut off your computer, anything saved to the hard drive stays on there. Uh, there are two different types of uh, long term storage drives. Uh, the first is a hard drive with the spinning magnetic disk, uh, the, sec the second is a solid state drive which basically functions as a giant flash drive. Uh, solid state drives or SSDs are much faster, but have less storage per card and are much more expensive. Um, a hard drive can hold a huge amount of, of uh, data in it, um, but uh, ends up being slower to access. Um, a decent uh, amount of space that you'll be looking for is probably a terabyte. Um, it's relatively cheap to get a, a terabyte of space in a, uh, in a hard drive, um, while a kind of expensive to get, uh, get it in an S SSD. But um, a terabyte will take you, take you a decent amount of time to fill up. So especially if you're servicing your data regularly, exporting old information and deleting old information. Um, a hard drive uh, that, uh, will probably cost about $70 for a terabyte, while an SSD costs about the same $70 for about 250 gigs. So if you want a terabyte on an SSD, you'll usually spend around 280. Uh, next thing I'd like to talk about is the cooling system. Uh, basically what your cooling system does is it keeps your computer cool. There are certain parts in your computer that can get really hot. Uh, your graphics card, if you have one, um, your CPU, your hard drive, all these things can get pretty toasty. Uh, some of them can even, if they're not properly cooled, get to the boiling temperature of water. Uh, there are two different types of cooling. Um, air and water. Uh, Air-cooled systems tend to run much cheaper, but you need to keep in mind how much space you're going to have in your uh, case because uh, they tend to be a little bulky. Um, while wa water cool systems are, are much sleeker and they look really cool, they're also more expensive and require more upkeep. Um, an air-cooled system can uh, will probably be in the 15 to 20 dollar range while a water cooled system can be anywhere between 40 and up. Uh, next I'd like to talk about the case. Uh, basically what the case does is it houses all the parts. Uh, the, the case is mostly for aesthetics. Um, it, uh, it will need to match the form factor of your motherboard so that you'll be able to fit everything. And if you have things like uh, uh, fan or air-cooled system, you might need to get a wider case to be able to accommodate everything. Uh, some cases have some really cool features. Uh, for example, uh, lights in the case or external fans or uh, extra places to put USB devices. Um, you can get a reasonable case for between $50 and $150. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about the peripherals. Um, peripherals include uh, uh, monitors, um, Something that you'll like to look at in a monitor is um, the uh, type of cord it takes. You'll want one that's either HDMI or DVI. There are some monitors that take VGA, uh, which is uh, much lower quality than HDMI or DVI. Um, you'll want to shoot for uh, 1080p uh, resolution. Um, you can get 720. Um, if you're not doing a lot with your computer, then you might as well just go with 720, especially if you're just using it as a word processor. Um, if you're a huge gamer, you can go up to 4K uh, resolution, but that ends up being really expensive and not too many uh, programs actually support 4K, so it ends up being a little bit of a sunk cost. Um, 
Next thing is a mouse. Uh, you all know what a mouse is. Uh, I'd suggest if you're an avid gamer, uh, spend a little extra on a mouse. Um, this is gonna be your main interface with your computer. You'll be doing a lot with it. Um, it's nice to have extra buttons, extra lights if you want it to look cool. Um, so if you're a gamer, go with an expensive mouse. If you're not, uh, just go with a reasonable working mouse. Um, you can pick them up at Best Buy for 10 bucks. Um, a keyboard is similar to the mouse in that everyone knows what it is, but if you're a gamer, you might want to spend a little extra on this. Um, you can get, uh, I've seen uh, gaming keyboards go for between like 150 and like $300. Um, while a, a decent mid-range keyboard that's not intended for gaming um, can be between like 15 and 35 uh, last are uh, speakers. Um, some monitors come with speakers, but uh, speakers would be a nice thing to focus on uh, if you would if you have a little bit of money burning a hole in your pocket. Uh, speakers vary a lot in price. You can get a fifteen dollar set of speakers that will serve a fine purpose, uh, or you can get a mind blowing set of speakers that'll cost about three hundred dollars. Uh, some of the optional stuff uh, include a GPU. Uh, they're great for gaming. If you're a gamer, get a GPU. If you're not, don't bother. It's, but it's going to be the most expensive part of your computer if you get one. Uh, a network card is uh, also uh, an optional uh, thing to get. Most motherboards come with one, uh, but basically what the network card does is it allows your computer to talk to the internet or Bluetooth or other computers. Um, Another thing to look at is a sound card. Most motherboards also have one built in and uh, they're kind of expensive and don't really do a whole lot. So unless you got the really expensive set of speakers, I'd avoid the sound card. Uh, lastly is the CD and DVD reader. They're not at all necessary nowadays since everything is downloaded online, but uh, they're really cheap, cost about 10 to $15. Um, and it's kind of a fun thing to have a little nostalgic and uh, say you find an old uh, movie at, at your house and you want to watch it, you can watch it on your computer now. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Here are the credits. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day.